Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about the continuity of a function on an interval. In the previous video, we have discussed the conditions for a function to be continuous at a number. This time, let us study on how to determine continuity of a function on an interval. Remember that in an interval, we are now talking of several values within an open or closed interval. With this, we can define the continuity of a function on an open interval as follows. A function f is continuous on an open interval a, comma b if f is continuous at each number in the interval. Moreover, based on the definition, we need to remember the conditions for a function to be continuous at a number. If we want to determine if the function is continuous on an interval, then it should be continuous at each number in the interval. Seemingly, it could be very tedious if we will check the continuity of a function in every number in the interval, especially if the interval contains wide range of values. Here, we can just simply consider the third condition since it summarizes the other two conditions. Furthermore, to avoid long solutions, we can also imagine continuity of a function on a given open interval depending on what kind of function is being given with respect to its domain. On the other hand, to determine the continuity of a function on a given closed interval, the following conditions should be satisfied. First, f is continuous on the open interval a, b, and second, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to f of a and the limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left is equal to f of b. Let us have an example. Determine if the function is continuous on the indicated closed interval. The given function is f of x is equal to x square root of x and the given closed interval is 0, 1. To determine if f is continuous on the given closed interval, then the conditions should be satisfied. For the first condition, f is continuous on the open interval a, b. Since the given function f of x equals x times the square root of x is a radical function, then Remember that its domain should be the set of non-negative numbers, meaning x should be greater than or equal to 0. In the open interval 0, 1, note that it is consist of non-negative numbers. Hence, f is continuous on the open interval 0, 1. Therefore, the first condition is being satisfied. For the second condition, the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right should be equal to f of a and the limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left is equal to f of b. Let us consider the first one. Evaluating the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right, we will have the limit of x times the square root of x as x approaches 0 from the right is equal to 0 times the square root of 0, which is equal to 0. Moreover, evaluating f of 0, we will have f of 0 is equal to 0 times the square root of 0, which is also equal to 0. From here, Notice that the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to f of a. Also, we need to check if the limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left is equal to f of b. Evaluating the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from the left, we will have 1 times square root of 1 which is equal to 1. Moreover, evaluating f of 1, 
we will have 1 times square root of 1 is equal to 1. From here, notice that the limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left is equal to f of b. Hence, the second condition is being satisfied. Since condition 1 is satisfied, as well as the second condition, then we can say that f is continuous at the closed interval 0, 1. Studying the graph of the given function, notice that in the interval 0, 1, there is no gap, no hole, no jump, or any form of discontinuity. Thus, on the closed interval 0, 1, f is continuous. Let us have another example. Determine if the function is continuous on the indicated closed interval given that the function is equal to 1 over x squared minus 1 and the given closed interval is 0, 1. Again, to determine if the function is continuous on the given closed interval, then the conditions should be satisfied. For the first condition, f is continuous on the open interval a, b. Since the given function is a rational function, remember that we have a restriction on the denominator that it should not be equal to zero. On the given function, x cannot be equal to negative one and one since it will make the denominator equal to zero. However, observe that negative one and one are not included in the open interval zero comma one which means that the function is continuous on this open interval. Therefore, the first condition is being satisfied. Now, let us go to the second condition. Let us check if the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to f of a. Evaluating the limit of the function as x approaches 0 from the right, we will have the limit of 1 over x squared minus 1 as x approaches 0 from the right will be equal to 1 over 0 squared minus 1 which is equal to negative 1. On the other hand, to evaluate f of a, substitute 0 on the variable x on the given function. We will have f of 0 is equal to 1 over 0 squared minus 1 which is also equal to negative 1. Since we have arrived on the same value, negative 1, it follows that the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to f of a. Now, let us check if the limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left is equal to f of b. Evaluating the limit of the function as x approaches 1 from the left, we will have the limit of 1 over x squared minus 1 as x approaches 1 from the left is equal to 1 over 0 squared minus 1. Since x is approaching 1 from the left, we have used the interval x less than 1, that is why we have substitute 0 at x. In here, notice that we have arrived with the answer negative infinity. On the other hand, to evaluate f of b, substitute 1 on the given function. And we will have f of 1 is equal to 1 over 1 squared minus 1, which is equal to undefined. Since we have negative infinity and undefined as answers, we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches b from the left is not equal to f of b. And with this, condition number 2 is not being satisfied. Since condition 1 is satisfied but not condition number 2, f is not continuous at the closed interval 0, 1. Observing the graph of the function, at the closed interval 0, negative 1, there is an asymptote at x is equal to 1, which causes the discontinuity of the function on the given interval. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For the next video, 
we will discuss about problems that involve continuity of functions. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next discussion.